Welcome to Building Modern APIs with RESTful. My name is Mateu, and in this video we're going to go back to the caching system that we saw earlier and I'm going to explain you how uh, it is possible to do this smart caching validation and how you can use that in your resources to do um, different cache versions based on your business logic. So uh, the first thing that I want to show you is um, actually the first thing that we need to do is go ahead and disable the page cache otherwise we're not going to get any hits for our cache because the page cache is going to shortcut all the execution so uh, now we're going back sorry um, all right, so now we're going back to our 115 milliseconds that we had before for this particular request. And um, here we are back to getting cache hits for, for the labels. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to request label 58 uh, just to just to have less caches to deal with and this is going to be a little bit less overwhelming uh, then I'm going to come here sorry uh, then I'm going to come here and I'm gonna clear caches and uh, I'm going to show you the contents of the restful cache fragment table. So right now it's empty because you, we just clear caches. And this is not um, this is not a cache table because remember that all our caches are pushed to memcache. Um, what this is, is, this is a table that holds entities. So there's a custom entity that holds all of the information about how the caches are constructed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to request this. It's going to generate all the caches for label 58 and all of the all of the tree in inside of it. So it's going to be a bunch of entries. And now if I select everything, you can see that. Uh, well, you probably can't see anything because this is okay. You can see that the, there are lots of entries, there are 46 rows and uh, what this gives us is information on how the cache was constructed and you can see that uh, there's a hash and uh, the hash is going to be our cache ID so a sing, every different hash represents a cache entry so uh, you can spot how this cache, uh, this hash here is the same in here, etc., etc. So what I'm going to, to do is I'm going to find node 58 or label 58. As you can see, it's the same hash. And that means that this particular cache entry is identified by this hash, the one that affects label 58. So I'm going to select all of the entities from the, from the entity uh, restful cache fragment, the, the entity table, where the hash is, oh, sorry. All right, so uh, what I'm doing here is basically I'm selecting all of the things that are affecting this cache entry. So if I were to change any of these things, this cache entry will, would be invalidated. So uh, this means that I have a cache fragment of type entity node 89, so if I edit the entity node 89 this cache entry is gone if I go and do a put or a patch request or a delete on the resource 
people 1 89 then this is going to wipe this cache so basically any action that affects any of this is going to wipe this cache so uh, you can see that uh, you can invalidate the cache for label 58 by either doing a write operation on the resource for people 53 or by going into the Drupal user interface and editing or deleting node 53. Um, also, you can see that there is uh, a different one. So there are basically here three types, resource, entity, and there, in, uh, there is one that's for matter. Uh, that, that's because if I were to select this, uh, this same node 58 or label 58 using a different um, representation or a, a different formatter, then I would get different data and different cache data means that this hash would need to be different. And also, if I were to modify the, um, the formatter, this cache should uh, evaporate. So um, there are two things, uh, two concepts merged into a single one. So I'm uh, reusing the concepts that uh, some very smart people thought in Drupal 8 for the cache tags and the cache con context. So the cache contexts are the things that make the cache entry be different. In this case, this is a cache context because uh, changing the formatter for, uh, I don't know, XML would make the cache to be different. So the, the hash should be different because it should be a, a different cache entry. Uh, you could not reuse the, the representation in JSON API for label 54 is not going to be the same as the representation for label 54 in XML. So this is a cache context. And at the same time, uh, uh, we have cache tags. And that means that uh, by changing node 54, I need to uh, invalidate this entry. So uh, I did this super simplification of uh, these two concepts into this uh, new one called cache fragments. And uh, what this allows us is to do things like um, my resource, oops, my resource needs to uh, do, um, actually it's not the, the resource, but my data provider needs to do some splitting based on my custom logic. So, I don't know, imagine that you want to, or you have some a weird system that uh, on Wednesdays, it adds you, um, yeah, it adds some data to, to your API uh, because I don't know, it's special Wednesdays and your menu is a little bit better. So what you would do is in your data provider, data provider, your data provider, you're gonna have to override the cache fragments. And in here you would add, see how we are adding the, the resource type that matches here and if we go to data provider entity we are also adding the entity and right now we are doing the uh, all the requests are by the anonymous user but if we had um, a user we would be adding the user ID or the user role, depending on the configuration that you have. Uh, so uh, imagine that going back to our example, your cache entries should change uh, depending on the day of the week. You could do something like um, is Wednesday. 
and uh, I don't know, do something based on the date. Meal, date, time, blah, blah, blah. Your custom logic goes here, and this re results to true or false, and then we would see this with an extra entry of is Wednesday equals true, and then, so basically we would have, let me reproduce this, we would have this with maybe an extra entry called is Oops. Ah. Uh. Ah. Uh. Ah. Uh. Well, I imagine that that this is the correct name. Uh, I don't want to mess with the table structure, and this would see would say true. And this would be the cache entry for this particular label on Wednesday. And then you would have something here that obviously had, will have different, uh, different cache, um, cache fragment IDs, but uh, everything else would be the same, except for each Wednesday that it would be false and this cache would be uh, obviously completely completely different so it would be a different hash so by adding here um, another fragment what you are doing is for the same thing you are basically adding uh, fragmenting this into two. So you're splitting this cache and now since you said that uh, we said that on Wednesday the output is different we have two versions of our cache when Wednesday is true and when it's false. So that's how you can uh, modify the cache entries. You probably won't have to do this ever but if you are doing some uh, data providers because you want to integrate this module through another country or uh, something else you can leverage caching by doing this trick and that should be it uh, thank you for watching